part one of this video, we considered some of the ways that masculine and feminine gender affect our sexuality. In part two, we will explore two more genders. We will then consider how the four gender variations combine to further compound our sexuality. To appreciate the nuances of sexual orientation, it's important to remember the contribution of its foundation, genetic dominance. Genetic dominance is a genetic key. It determines the characteristics we inherit from our parents. Genetic dominance creates diversity. It does this by organizing two design elements in such a way that they produce four different relationships. Genetic dominance either gives control to one of two elements, merges the two into one, or causes the two to work as a team. In part one, we examine the three types of genetic dominance, complete dominance, incomplete dominance, and co-dominance. Complete dominance, remember, produces binary gender. It does this by making one of the two hemispheres dominant and the other recessive. Since gender is a product of the systems that operate the hemispheres, this leaves us conscious of our dominant gender and largely unconscious of our recessive gender. The yin-yang symbol might help explain their relationship. Think of the two small circles within each half as representing the influence our recessive gender has on our dominant gender. Incomplete dominance and co-dominance give us non-binary gender. They cause masculine and feminine genders to function as one. Now, the brain's operating systems and their genders are always working together to some degree. But when the two are genetically coordinated, our masculine and feminine systems are more equal in their power to affect our thoughts, behaviors, and feelings. Consider how incomplete dominance and co-dominance affect sexual orientation. With incomplete dominance, our masculine and feminine genders integrate into a single gender, a hybrid gender. Since masculine and feminine genders can combine in a variety of ways, hybrid gender produces polysexual behaviors. Hybrid gender is fluid in that the integration of masculine and feminine energies can take many forms and vary over a wide range. When genetic codominance determines the brain's operation, the two hemispheres maintain their independence and work cooperatively. They function as a team. Both operating systems and their genders are dominant. With both systems seeking their complement, we are attracted to male and female bodies. Our masculine system drives us to have sex with females, and our feminine system seeks to attract males. We are bisexual. Once we understand how the brain can produce four sexual orientations, it's easy to understand how it can produce 16. Simply keep in mind that the brain processes information in two distinct stages. Information input and information output are separate sequential events. Information input starts with our viewpoint. So, I refer to gender associated with information input as viewpoint gender. Our response to what we see creates an output of information. I therefore refer to gender associated with information output as response gender. In stage one, the brain gathers and processes information and sends it to mind. In stage two, the brain assists us in the development of a response. Our sexual orientation is affected because the systems that process our information are gendered. 
we feel the effects of the behaviors they produce. Since one of four gendered systems will default to help us process information input, and one of four will default to help us process information output, gender can compound in 16 different ways. Information input, which determines what we see, and information output, which reflects our response, often default to be processed by the same hemisphere. In that case, we experience the same gender in both the viewpoint stage and the response stage. In other words, we experience the same gender twice, so our sexual orientation is based on having one dominant gender. An example of this is most right-handed cisgender men. When different hemispheres default to manage the input and output of information, we inherit different dominant genders. An example is most right-handed cisgender women. By default, these women view the world through the lens of their feminine system, and unless taught otherwise, respond to it with the help of their masculine system. Both their feminine and masculine genders play a dominant role in their sexual orientation. A tomboy is an example of someone with feminine information input and masculine information output. When it comes to how she perceives her world and to choosing a mate, she is fully feminine. Yet, when responding to events, Unless she has learned to respond in a feminine manner, she is likely to default to her masculine system. As a consequence, her external behavior will often appear masculine. Having a second gender that is different from the first also compounds the sexual orientation of gay men and lesbians. Gay men and lesbians may default to either a masculine, feminine, polysexual, or bisexual response gender, depending on which is dominant for information output. When we see cisgender women exhibit a tendency toward masculine behaviors and cisgender men exhibit feminine behaviors, chances are it's because their two dominant genders are different. But Keep in mind that the effects of dominance will vary in intensity from person to person. Someone's gender behavior may be so weak that it's difficult to identify. In addition, culture often has a strong influence on sexual orientation. Although cultural influences cannot change our sexual orientation, they can cause us to attempt to disguise it. Information input and information output contribute to sexual orientation in profoundly different ways. The information we acquire from our viewpoint informs us and establishes an internal gender identity. This identity and the gender it projects to consciousness is deeply felt and establishes the sex to which we are attracted. So, for example, if incoming information defaults to be processed by our masculine system, then we will observe the world from the viewpoint of masculine gender and will feel masculine. We will be attracted to females, regardless of the sex of our body and regardless of our response gender. In contrast, the information we project with our response informs others. This creates an external gender identity. Response gender can be observed. Response gender is identified through our behavior, such as how we clothe ourselves or move our body. If our feminine system defaults to process our response, our response gender will be feminine, regardless of the sex of our body and regardless of our viewpoint gender. Our response gender appears to have no effect on the sex to which we are attracted.
but further research is needed before we can understand how response gender affects our sexual orientation. The fluidity that we see in sexual orientation starts with the 16 basic variations that come about as masculine and feminine genders combine in various ways. In addition, each of the 16 compound genders will independently vary, for example, in terms of the intensity of each component. Variation exists both within and between each of a bisexual's masculine and feminine components. And don't forget the variation that occurs as masculine and feminine energies hybridize, as expressed through polysexuality. Gender can take many forms as masculine and feminine insights and behaviors integrate. We arrive at 32 variations in sexual orientation because males can experience one of 16 variations and females can experience one of 16 variations. Given that female bodies tend to come paired with an estrogen-dominant hormonal experience, and male bodies are usually paired with a testosterone-dominant experience, females and males will have a different sexual experience, regardless of which brain operating system or systems guide their behavior. In conclusion, my research into the origins of sexual orientation suggests that sexuality is a product of the systems that operate the brain's hemispheres. The way these systems combine and the genders that they produce are determined by the type of genetic dominance that we inherit. I see no credible evidence that one's gender or sexual orientation can be changed. If you would like more information about gender, check out my videos, Gender's Four Variations and Gender's Sixteen Variations, or my book, How Whole Brain Thinking Can Save the Future. <music>